Philippians 4, 8 to 9, part 2. Last week we looked at the things we should be thinking about. We learned that what we meditate about will affect our thoughts and actions. Paul now moves on to one more thought, the need to follow his example. Philippians 4, 9, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do and the God of peace will be with you. It may seem strange for Paul to hold himself up as an example to follow. In some situations, that would be looked down on as pride. Look at me, I'm your example. But if you have been reading through the epistle, you know that this was not the case. <clears throat> Paul was a godly Christian who was following the Lord with all his heart. And as their teacher, he was a good example to follow. So from this verse, I have two points. The first is, follow my example. When I coached a junior high basketball team, I quickly found out that it was easier to show the players how to do something than to tell them. As I played the game with them, I was able to give an example of the things I had told them. The teaching mixed with an example was more helpful than teaching by itself. This is what we will see in Philippians 4.8. Now a question. When had they seen Paul's example? The Philippian believers knew Paul because they had met him and learned from him. As far as I can tell, Paul had been in the city of Philippi on two different occasions. His first visit is recorded in Acts 16. This is probably the one you're most familiar with. He had spent several days there. He had spoken the gospel to Lydia, who believed and was baptized. And there was a demon-possessed girl who was following him. And uh, being annoyed with this, he cast the demon out of her. And this caused the people who were using her uh, for fortune telling to become angry. They hauled him and Silas before the city officials. They were flogged and imprisoned. But while they were in prison about midnight, they were praying and singing hymns to the Lord. And there was a great earthquake that freed them, opened all the doors of their jail cells. And this led the jailer to think that everyone had escaped. But Instead, uh, Paul called to him and said, do yourself no harm. Uh, and the man wanted to know how to be saved, and so he led the jailer and his family to faith in Jesus. Later on, he confronted the city leaders about his rights as a Roman city, a, a citizen. <clears throat> and then, before leaving the city, he encouraged the Christians in the city. So, this is what we most remember about the Christians in Philippi. But there was one other time when he visited the city that we know of. His second visit was recorded in Acts 20. Uh, a few things in that passage say that he encouraged the believers in Macedonia. Philippi was in Macedonia. He stayed in Greece for three months. And then he went back through Macedonia and he sailed away from Philippi. So it could be that when he was in Macedonia that he was speaking to the people in Philippi. When he went back through, he spoke to them again and then sailed away. While there are no details about this visit, it's assumed that he stopped to visit them, the believers at the church in Philippi. The quick voyage didn't allow much time for a prolonged visit, but it would have been an encouragement to those who were there. Now, what was Paul's example? In his verse, he says, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. So what was Paul's example? First, his doctrinal example. The Philippian believers had learned from Paul and received his teaching. They had learned from him. This involved his teaching them God's truth, which, as an apostle, he had received directly from God and from his studies in the Old Testament scriptures. If this were happening today, what would you think would be good to teach a group of new believers? You would probably have to teach them about who God is, uh, the fact of sin and the coming judgment, uh, the new birth, um, the birth life teachings, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, forgiveness of sins, the future, and many other things. So they had learned from him. They had received things from him as well. Teaching is good and necessary for people to learn what God says, but teaching must be received for it to make a difference in your life. It is one thing to learn about the truth, it is altogether another to actually receive, take possession of, or acknowledge it. Do you know what God says in the Bible? Perhaps you've been taught what the Bible says, or you have read some of it. But there must come a time in your life when you receive it for yourself. This is called faith. 
Throughout the Bible, we are told to not only hear, but to believe what God says. Have you come to that place yet? If not, I encourage you to keep studying the Bible. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So they learn from his doctrinal example, but secondly, his personal example. The Philippian believers had heard and seen Paul in person. His example had shown them what a true believer is like, so they had heard him. When you are around a person for a while, you hear not only the words that they say, but the personality and motivation behind those words. If Paul was anything like his epistle in person, his words must have been filled with graciousness and love. Do you remember how the epistle begins with grace and peace and thanks to God for them? When they heard Paul, they saw a genuine Christian man. But they had also seen him. The Philippian believers had been visited by Paul on at least two occasions. Uh, One commentator says on his first visit and on subsequent stopovers, they had seen these graces displayed in Paul. In other words, they saw the very things he was teaching in his personal life. He wasn't just telling them to do something. He was actively living it out in his personal life. They had seen this. Paul was a good example for the Philippian believers. His doctrinal example was such that they had received and believed God's truth from him. But they had also seen the truth lived out personally by Paul. Over the years, I have had different Christian heroes. These were people who were examples to me like pastors, missionaries, teachers, or individual Christians who taught me and lived a godly life. None were perfect, but they each showed me something about their relationship with the Lord. I also hope to be a good example to other people, but am well aware of my own failings. So I will say what Paul said elsewhere, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians 11.1 If you see something in me that points you towards Jesus, follow that. Now another question, what were they to do with Paul's example? They were to follow his example and do the same things. The word do could also be translated as practice. Paul had given them an example, not just to watch from afar, but to actually put into practice. The word do implies an ongoing daily effort. This is not a one-time attempt or short-term effort to follow God. What Paul wanted is for the Philippian believers, and for us as well, to follow his example and to become examples themselves. Do you think that you could ever become an example for others to follow? Your first response might be an emphatic no. But let's think about that for a moment. Every Christian is called to practice the things Paul talks about in this epistle. And as we do these things, with God's help, others will be watching. For example, when we help those who are not getting along, when we rejoice in the Lord even during bad times, when we are gracious to others, when we have God's peace from praying to God, and when we are careful what we think about, do you think others will notice? In these ways, each of us who knows the Lord can be an example for others to follow. So our first point was, follow my example. and We've talked about that. Now we'll look at the second part of the verse. It says, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the second part is, and the God of peace will be with you. Our second point is, enjoy God's presence. Enjoy God's presence. Paul concludes this verse with a promise. Christians who do the above-mentioned things will have the God of peace with them. Having God with us at all times is a special blessing. Jesus told his disciples to preach the gospel to the world, but also mentioned that he would be with them, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. That must have encouraged them to keep going during hard times. We personally have sung songs like, God himself is with us, and God will take care of you because we value God's presence with us. However, Paul describes God's presence a little bit differently here. Now, why is God called the God of peace? If you were to give a description of God, what would you make, what would make the list of his qualities? You might say that God is holy, loving, patient, all-powerful, wise, and perfect. But here Paul calls him the God of peace. Why is that? I think that Paul emphasizes God's peace because of what he had been teaching them in Philippians 4, 1 through 8. Remember, there were two church members, Euodia and Syntyche, who were not getting along. They needed God's peace. 
there were events that would try to steal away their joy in the Lord. There would be situations where they would not feel like being gracious, but God's peace would help them, especially as they thought about his imminent return. There were things that caused anxiety, but God's peace would be available when they prayed to him and thanked him. And there could be many worthless things that would fill their minds unless they chose to meditate on godly things. Think about that. God, in each of those situations, is the God of peace. He wants you to have the peace that only comes from him. Whenever you are going through troubling or anxious times, think about the God of peace whom you know. Turn your troubles over to him and find the peace that passes all understanding. Now, the end of the verse says, and the God of peace will be with you. And that brings up another question. Why does he say that he would be with them? Paul told the Philippian believers that the God of peace would be with them when they followed his Christian example. This makes me think back to the beginning in Genesis chapter 3. After God created the first man, Adam, he interacted with him. He spoke to him and had a relationship with him. While we often think that God is far off, he actually is here with us today. He is wanting to be with us and to have a relationship that is good and enjoyable. Paul knew this by personal experience. One commentator says this, By pursuing the course of life which he had led and which he here counsels them to follow, he had found that it had been attended with the blessing of the God of peace, and he felt the fullest assurance that the same blessing would rest on them if they imitated his example. I think that's true. Once again, Paul was sharing with them and with us the wonderful news that God is with those who follow God's ways. As was true for him, it is true for us. If we are willing to not only believe the Lord, but to follow his instructions, our relationship with God will be good. Sadly, there are many people who claim to be Christians today, but who do not enjoy their relationship with God like Paul did. It isn't that they're not true believers or that, or that they aren't apostles like Paul. The real problem is that some Christians don't practice what they have been taught. Are you one of those people? Each of us begins our relationship with God the same way, through repentance and faith. We acknowledge our sin against God and turn from it, and turn to Jesus. When we place our faith in him who died for our sins and rose from the dead, God forgives us and gives us new life in Jesus. But after we have become a Christian, we shouldn't sit back and be lazy. We should learn from the Bible and practice what we learn from God. This is how we will develop our relationship with the Lord, and this is where we will find God's peace. In today's Bible study, we have seen several things. We are to follow the example of godly Christians like Paul. Those who have taught the truth from the Bible and lived it in their lives should be the ones we pattern our lives after. And as we do that, God will be with us providing the peace that we need. A few questions. Will you follow Paul's example this week? Although he was never perfect, we can learn a lot from Paul. He often put his life in jeopardy to preach the gospel and to teach Christians God's truth. Will you be an example this week? Just like the rest of us, you are not perfect, but your life can be an example to others. As they hear your words and see your life, you can show what God has done in your life. That is being an example. Will you work on your relationship with the Lord this week? The Bible promises that God's peace and presence will be with you as you do the things mentioned here. So take advantage of God's offer to you. Get to know the Lord as you faithfully do what you have learned.